what's going on everyone welcome back to football therapy with me your host Jan I hope you lot are doing well and welcome to today's video where I'm talking about Chelsea's pre-season form player Ross Barkley but before we get into today's video I want to request that you do subscribe to my YouTube channel hit the bell notification icon because I upload every single day and I want you guys to keep up to date. Right then, Ross Barkley, man. Divides opinion between Chelsea fans and indeed football fans in general. As a youngster coming up through Everton, he was held in such a high regard. He was like a straight up English wonder kid, right? He obviously had a very good spell at Everton when he played with Lukaku. He was linking up well and people were taking notice. And he was like earning points in fantasy football a few years ago. But he went off the boil. People stopped talking about Ross Barkley. And he got like an injury and I guess had some troubles at Everton. And you know, people stopped talking about him. His contract ran down and he signed for Chelsea for £15 million. Now we're going to be talking about Ross Barkley in such a positive light in this video because I want to talk about how good he's been performing and what Chelsea and football can expect from Ross. So reflect on £15 million. I know he ran his contract down uh, at Everton and therefore it kind of dictated the transfer fee of just £15 million. But if you think about what this player is now, a, a, like a young English full international starts for a top tier club, £15 million in this recent transfer market looks like such shrewd business by Chelsea Football Club, especially if you look at what he's doing at the moment. Now at the time when Chelsea signed him, he had an injury. Chelsea were going through that peculiar stage where they were just signing players that maybe are past it with injuries like what Danny Drinkwater and Ross Barkley and I think they signed Bakayoko who was injured as well. It was like a weird theme at the time. Anyway, a lot of people laughed at Chelsea. I'm a Chelsea fan and a lot of people sort of thought what a weird peculiar purchase for Chelsea Football Club and this is the level you're at now. You're buying injured sort of failed wonder kids or has-beens or whatever stuff like that but i had hope i remembered how good ross barkley used to be and it's important to note at this point that i've heard from a few different people that chelsea have long been looking at ross barkley since he was very very young obviously he caught the eye of loads of scouts or people that just worked in football maybe even analysts or people like that and apparently when chelsea were trying to think of like a contingency plan to to sort of someone to be the successor to Frank Lampard. Obviously, they look within in the Chelsea Academy because when kids grow up in the Chelsea Academy, they're shown videos of Frank Lampard, like the midfielders, like uh, Billy Gilmore, Ruben Loftus-Cheek, Mason Mount, all these guys, they, they are made to study Frank Lampard um, to it, you know develop their game because really, he's the sort of benchmark for the top tier midfielder that can play in the Premier League. So the fact that Chelsea were looking outside their own academy at someone like Ross Barkley as a potential successor to Frank Lampard speaks volumes, especially if you consider at the time, I know, you know, Billy Gilmore and Mason Mount are very young, but certainly Ruben Loftus-Cheek was a similar age to Ross Barkley, maybe like one year younger or something. So he was highly rated and watched for a long time. And a couple of seasons ago in a January window, Chelsea bought him for 15 million. At the time, Chelsea was being coached by a very grumpy Antonio Conte who he didn't know who Ross Barkley was he didn't really care I remember watching press conferences when people were talking to Conte about Barkley and he was sort of like yeah he's a player apparently <laughs> I've spoken about Barkley before on this channel and sort of waxed lyrical about his professional application to Chelsea how you know he got into the sort of London lifestyle he got all his Everton tattoos removed and he got into the best shape of his life didn't really get much of a chance under Conte but when Sari came in he had a whole pre-season to get extra fit study his Napoli side and he really impressed Sari hence getting a lot of minutes under uh, Maurizio Sari. so Ross Barkley was actually good for Chelsea last season. He got eight uh, domestic league goal contributions and important goals in limited minutes, kind of. He scored, you know, important goals in the Europa League, scored free kicks, and he was showing bright moments. But Sarri wasn't getting the best out of Barkley. I think he liked his professional dedication and application and therefore included him into his squad and rotated him with Kovacic all the fucking time. Excuse my language. But yeah, in my opinion, he wasn't getting the best out of Ross Barkley. Ross used to be great as a number 10, even though he wears the number 8 for Chelsea and he can occupy that number 8 role probably quite well. 
He's absolutely an excellent number 10 and this is sort of becoming more and more evident as he shines under Frank Lampard in preseason, which we'll get into in just a couple of minutes. But what I want to sort of highlight here is Ross isn't a player that's suddenly playing well and everyone's going wow. He used to be a very, very, I was going to say a great prospect, but he, a very talented kid. People could see there's a lot to this guy, you know. He's not someone that was sort of okay for a while. Chelsea got for a, a cheap price so they might be able to make a few mil on. This was a really highly rated youngster. And he's still young, what's he, mid, early mid-twenties, about to touch his prime? So much Premier League experience, experience in Europe now, experience in cups, experience on an international level. Southgate definitely looks to Ross Barkley now to be an integral part of his England squad. Remember when England did that iconic win in, I think it was the Nations League, away in Spain? The first like team to win in Spain in ages, some weird statistic like that. When when uh, I was gonna say Chelsea, when England were up three nil in the first half, I think England fans everywhere were losing their heads. It was mental. Ross Barkley was excellent for England in that game, and that was playing a midfield three like Sari played. Uh, one of Kane's goals, he played an absolute Perlo esque long ball to land on Kane and he scored a great goal. We're starting to see that in preseason, and I will talk about preseason in just a second. So people need to remember that Ross Barkley was really good last season. Um, you know, if he'd scored away at Old Trafford, a scrappy goal in stoppage time to like win a point. Uh, he's got the I'll say application, I've said it a few times, but the dedication, he's very integrated. He wants to win, he wants to be at Chelsea, and he wants to play under Frank Lampard. One of his first comments in the media interview is he looked up to Frank Lampard as the kind of number eight or number 10, that player. When he was developing, he looks to Frank Lampard, and who wouldn't if you played in the midfield in English football? So you can imagine he's elated that now he's being coached by Frank Lampard. And although Frank might rate Ross when he arrives, he knows he's got players like Ruben Loftus-Cheek or attacking midfielders, people that can play in the 10, like even Pulisic. And obviously, Frank the Rampard's arriving with his, you know, surrogate son, Mason Mount, who he probably had every intention of making a starting player just because he loves him so much. But Barkley's pre-season form, and I know everyone, it's pre-season, I understand pre-season, pre-season, but there's been some competitive games this pre-season against opposition who are already started their domestic campaigns, like, Frontali halfway through and Salzburg have started. There were some high octane performances in there. And we beat Barcelona. Point being, Ross Barkley has been Chelsea's best player this preseason. He's, I think he's like top for goals, top for assists. He's scoring excellent free kicks. But you know what? Scoring direct free kicks, assisting scoring is all superb. But you know what's been making his performances extra special? Sure, he's playing at number 10, so in a 4-2-3-1, he's playing in the 10. Uh, in a 4-4-2 diamond, he's playing at the tip of a diamond, essentially the number 10. And he has been completely explosive in that position. But what makes Ross Barkley's performances so, so, so incredibly good for me is how he's dictating the game. Something that you get from a regista, dirty word, but he's dropping deep. Because Frank Lampard allows his midfield to rotate all the time, he's got license to drop deep and he always wants the ball. If you've watched him this preseason, and probably in games where he was allowed a bit more license or Chelsea were losing under Sarri, so he took control a bit more and took responsibility, he might drop out of Sarri's positional system, but certainly under Frank, he drops deep, he demands the ball, he gets it, and you completely trust him with the ball. He's either, he can either dribble, he's very physical and strong, he can do short interplay, he's very technical, he can do the little flicks. But you know what? He's just got these long, diagonal, accurate balls where if Chelsea are going to have people like Hudson Adoy or uh, Christian Pulisic, who's been excellent last game, running, getting running in behind, he's spraying these beautiful long diagonals like a talented number six or something like that. But he can absolutely play in the final third and score goals and assist himself. He's such a valuable midfielder in terms of talent and ability that he can move anywhere, occupy different spaces and fill in. Now, it's important to know I'm a Ruben Loftus-Cheek super fan and I've done a video on him. I think he's an excellent player. I've watched him play live loads of times. I think he's superb and he's really exciting to watch when he dribbles, when he's got the ball at his feet and he pops off a shot. He's like a sort of hench Eden Hazard in many ways. 
I don't want to overcook it, but I am a Loftus Cheek super fan. But you know what, man? Even though I think Mason Mount's excellent and he can properly help Chelsea's in their domestic campaign this season, at the moment, the only real obvious first name on the team sheet as it stands, for me, is probably Ross Barkley. Now, I have no, like, Ross Barkley super agenda. You know, I wanted the number eight or to be Ruben Loftus-Cheek or I really like Mason Mount. Obviously, Ross Barkley, he's, he's a scouser. He's from Everton. He's brought in... There's no particular close affection or affiliation to uh, Ross Barkley from Chelsea fans, apart from, you know, since he's arrived, he's been very professional and dedicated. But wh what he's doing on the pitch in terms of offensive contribution and just controlling the game, occup occupying the right space, um, you know, demanding the ball, releasing it, relieving the team of pressure, it's just all so important. And, you know, he can bang direct free kicks, score long range goals, score scrappy goals assist in every kind of way that you know that recent goal um that world-class goal that pedro scored last game that you know the two assists barkley had in that game was superb if he can keep this form up and there's nothing to insinuate he can't because he's in incredibly good shape and he wants to play for this coach and he's got loads of premier league experience remember this isn't some foreign player that's just come into chelsea from a foreign league that's having a good pre-season this is a relatively young player that has so much experience in the Premier League and know what it takes. So there's every reason to be excited about Ross Barkley's upcoming Premier League campaign and indeed Champions League campaign. Provided Frank Lampard plays a 4-2-3-1 formation or the diamond and he puts Ross Barkley at the tip, I think it would be excellent. I'm not sure about like say the 4-1-4-1 to having when he tries to get both Mount and Barkley in. I'm not sure how that'll work, but certainly in terms of chemistry and being comfortable in the space, Barkley looks the most comfortable in Frank Lampard's team, in my opinion. I think Jorginho and Kovacic have been very good in terms of chemistry. I think there's a dynamic issue with a collective defensive issue, maybe the back line and certainly set pieces that Frank Lampard needs to sort out. But when it comes to someone who's comfortable in those two systems and can absolutely play at a top level, <laughs> it looks like Ross the Boss Barkley, man. Try not to get too hyped because it is pre-season, but in terms of what he's done on the ball, remember he's shown flashes of it for England and indeed for Chelsea under Sarri. Can't really remember how what he was like under Conte, if he even played that much because he was injured. Still, he's basically demonstrated great ability and this is the stuff he did when he was a kid. But, you know, he's gone through a lot, he's learned a lot, he's had loads of experiences, he's settled in London, he's settled with his teammates, he's, you know, he's got a good camaraderie with the Chelsea squad, he likes the coach, he idolises the coach, everything seems like a perfect storm for Ross Barkley to have an excellent season, so don't sleep on this scouser. And you know what, maybe even buy him in your fantasy Premier League team, I think he's like 6 million, so... Could be quite a shrewd purchase. That's it for this video, guys. I will be doing more about different players. I certainly want to do another video on Pulisic. I mean, I did a video about him a couple of weeks ago um, about how he's got good, he's had good form in the latter stages of his domestic campaign with Dortmund, and how he was very good for the USA. The first couple of games in preseason, he showed some good stuff with Chelsea, but obviously exploded in the last game. So as the season starts, I'll have more access to comprehensive statistics of player performances and I can't wait to talk about players like Barkley and Pulisic once the league gets started so make sure you are subscribed to this channel because you want to keep up with all that stuff definitely but yeah that is the end of the video guys and if you have enjoyed the content please do like the video remember you can support this channel by becoming a patron to my patron and gaining access to exclusive Q&A content where I answer your questions and it only costs one dollar a month link down in the description as well as my socials at football yannick uh, on twitter and instagram that's it guys enjoy the football and i will see you later you ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck i'ma get it how i'm living i'ma walk the walk outline my lines i rap through thought body bag the verse outlined in chuck in my life seen trouble hustle on the double silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle yo chick like to guzzle bad boy stay in trouble i only love this paper sorry i don't I